Hello, back to Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm Jake Benanton, and I'm here to talk today about it being a year to the day since Frank Lampard was moved on as Everton manager. Um, it's like simultaneously feel like it's been a really short year. Like when I saw the news this morning, I was thinking, that seems mad that I can't believe the year's gone by already. And then you think about all the things that have happened on the pitch for Everton, off the pitch, all the other things that have gone on. And you think, oh, this feels like three or four years kind of. Um, kind of sort of roll into one, and that's obviously the kind of feeling you get with Everton. Uh, quite a lot, to be fair. Um, obviously we moved on. Sean Dyche came in. He's done a really, really good job for my money since, since then. Um, but we're talking about the the Frank Lampard era, the year that he had in charge. And uh, yeah, obviously his first game was the four-one win over Brentford in the cup. I think the third, I think the fourth goal. Sorry, we had like a 30, 25 pass move. Um. Finished off brilliantly by Andros Townsend. I think that goal made him our top scorer for the season, which was, you know, just kind of indicative. I think he had the most goal and assist combined as well in our team. I think he had like eight or nine absolutely silly buggers, but um, that was great. But obviously, we needed a point in the league. We went and got, went and beat Leeds 3 0 um, about a week later. That was the last game we won by more than one goal, I think, during his. Tenure barred the game against Crystal Palace about six months later. I mean, we had two games in the league and in his tenure that we won by more than one goal, I believe, which just kind of sums it up. It was um, kind of it was kind of percentages, low quality football, um, seeing how things went and just kind of no real plan, no real way of going about things. Just see if we can try and win. If we don't, whatever. If we get a goal, let's. Try and hold on to it. Do we hold on to it? Do we try and go for another one? And then, yeah, it meant that every win we got under him pretty much, or bar those two games, were really, really stressful. But I've just got the fixtures up here because I'm just trying to run back some of these games. I mean, obviously, Southampton 2 0, we lost. That was, um, I think we should have had a penalty in that game and it was 0 0. We didn't. We got beat. Southampton playing quite well at the time, to be fair. We had the dreaded City game where Rodri was playing like volleyball in the box. Absolutely ridiculous. Michael Keane made another. Absolutely despicable error. Uh, beating five 0 by Tottenham. Michael Keane scored an own goal in that game, so that was terrible. Beat one 0 by Wolves. That was the game when I really thought we could be in a lot of trouble. Here. I think John Joe Kenny got sent off. Uh, really poor. But then we did beat Newcastle. That was just that's one of my favourite ever games at Goodison. I mean, something like this the other day. I could have a top five of games at Goodison over the last two seasons alone. Like the amount of mad games we've been involved in and great wins. And to be fair. And to Lampard, to give him maybe you know an ounce of credit, which isn't something I normally like to do. We did win some really, really big games under him. We had some great moments, and that Newcastle game, I mean, to stay in the match, ten men. Okay, Newcastle obviously went the kind of team went on to be last season, but they still had some good players. They were much better than us, and we stuck in there, stuck in there, stuck in there. We had the ridiculous thing about them, the man being tied to the post and all sorts. Um. And then obviously where we scored that goal and it's just it's it's the maddest I've ever seen a football stadium. Um probably until that Palace game was edged it in, in some ways, but even just the drama, ninety seventh, ninety eight, ninety ninth minute, I think it's the second latest winning goal ever scored in the Premier League. It's just absolutely absurd and that was a brilliant night. Uh, then we got beat by West Ham. That was quite unlucky to be fair. We had a couple of injuries going into that game, remember. Beat 3 2 by Burnley. That's when I thought we were gone. I thought we were down. Then obviously, Deitch frankly moved, walked away, or got sacked, or let go, or whatever it was. A few days after, that's what saved us really. Deitch having to go. But you, you think of that game, you concede 1 0. Nathan Collins scored, I think. We come back two goals, which are from the penalty spot. And then we just capitulated horrendously. I think Maxwell Corney scored, and might have been. Is it Sam Vokes or someone? Actually, I should be able to see him. Yeah, I'm on uh, Wikipedia's um, thing here. Uh, I know it's Jay Rodriguez, yeah. I remember this. Oh, God. God, it was an awful laugh. Then we beat United. I remember that I had COVID actually at the time. That's when COVID was obviously um, still you know, rife and quite a serious thing if, you, if people weren't particularly well around you or whatever. So I remember being in my room for the Burnley game, horrendous, and then being in my room for the, uh, the United game, which was obviously brilliant. Great win under him, as I say. Um, Drew Leicester and Charleston scored right at the end. He missed like four or five sitters. Huge results. Got beat by Liverpool again. Some very Jewish refereeing, as there always is at the Anfield derby. But then we beat Chelsea, beat Leicester again. He played Leicester twice in four games. 
<laughs> what a mad season. Um, Michelangelo scored that worldy volley. Uh, Mason Holgate scored as well. Pick made three or four brilliant saves. And then we went to Watford and it was like, if we won that game, we, we would have been fine. I think we would have been safe then. And we went and we drew nil nil. And it was like, okay, I'm not saying pile run forward and like really go and try and win it, but we had to win that game. I think Watford were actually relegated by that point or were on the verge. But then took to that winner takes all Brentford game. Really, if we won that game, we're fine. Goal after I think it was nine minutes or something. Um, Richarlison, I think Carvalho ended up claiming it, didn't he? What was it? Yeah, 10 minutes in, but then. Another no shock and referee decision. This was one thing with Lampard as well. He did he was on the end of some really, really bad decisions, to be fair, in terms of the football inside. Not sure any of them quite stack up against his own personal decisions, but um we should have had a penalty down one end eight seconds later, down to ten men. Brantway doesn't play again for us at Goodison until obviously I think it was the Wolves game this season when he when he came back. Uh, but then that palace match, I mean it's going to take some beating that, I think, in terms of just amazing games at Goodison. It's not something to celebrate and you never want ever to be down there, but at the end of the day, I get always frustrated about this, but at the end of the day, if we're not going to be winning titles, we're not going to be winning cups and stuff. I'd rather be in mid-table, obviously, but at least you get a night like that where you can remember and savour and something that hopefully in 30 years you can say, oh, I was there, a bit like your dad would say about... You know, the, the games that won is the league and then kept us up again 10 years later against Wimbledon and Coventry and stuff. Obviously, hopefully you can go and have those those former moments again, but to have the latter memories and to have been down there with your team and helping them stay up and everything, it was obviously a really special night. Got absolutely snotted by Arsenal with one of the most bizarre Everton lineups. Uh, you have a like to see. I think Begovic was captain, Van der Beek played, um, Brantley came back into the fold as well, I believe. Yeah, just bizarre, but... Um, I think we won 12 games under Lampard. You look at some of the wins there. The Palace game, away to Leicester, which was a tough place to go at the time. Beat Chelsea, beat United, beat Newcastle in that ridiculous match. Big win against Leeds. It, it, things look like they could have been good going to what was now, obviously, last season. But that didn't happen. We made some signings over the summer. And then we come into the season, we were really poor against Chelsea first game. Really bad against Villa. Um probably deserve more from the Brentford games and the Leeds games after that. I think the Leeds game, we had a, a goal that's allowed, which ended up being a huge <coughs> game in the season. Obviously, I didn't think Leeds are going to be down there personally, but um, we should have won that game. And I think the goal being allowed was, was what did for us. Liverpool, probably the best Merseyside derby I've seen for a long, long time in terms of both teams really going for it, being at it. Both teams should have scored. Both goalies had to make saves. Both teams missed chances. We had a goal disallowed. They hit the bar. They hit the post as well, I think. We hit the post, Tom Davis. Yeah, a really, really good Merseyside derby. But then we won the next two games. West Ham, Neil Mopay's only goal for Everton. Uh, and then we won away at Southampton, which again proved to be a, a huge result in terms of the season where Southampton finished. And again, you're thinking you get those two wins. You look at that as well. With six games unbeaten, we had the cup as well. I think we beat Fleetwood. Um, you're thinking... Maybe this is going to be something. We lose the next three against United, Tottenham and Newcastle. Um, we were really, really bad in all of those games, from what I recall. We then beat Palace, draw away at Fulham, 0-0. Not the worst shot in the world. Fulham had a decent season. Uh, and then beating home to Leicester. Lose 3 away to Bournemouth. Lose 4-1 away to Bournemouth in the Cup, obviously. Go to the World Cup and you're thinking, right, you should be gone here, really, because we played well in about two of those games this season started by Bournemouth twice in three days or whatever it was as as mentioned um really really poor but he stayed we let the chance of a mini pre-season in the middle of the season totally unique we let that chance slip for our fingers didn't replace and didn't bring in Sean Dyche when we should have done and then we go into the second half of the season beaten by um Wolves on Boxing Day Wolves bottom of the league at that time Get a bizarre draw away at City, fair enough, but then snotted at home by Brighton, beating in a really bad game against Southampton, which obviously, again, in terms of the context of the season, was a hugely bad result. And then, you know, I think in, in the game against Brighton and then the game against West Ham, which was, you know, what, what date was that? That was the 21st of January, today's the 22nd, I think, so, or 23rd. Yeah, 23rd, so... <laughs> that West Ham game, what was the point? Why on earth did he have that game? Because... The Brighton game and the West Ham game, both of those, I would guess we had more possession than both those teams. And in both games, you didn't get a kick. It's just absolutely bizarre. But he was finally relieved of his duties, put out of misery. He went to Chelsea, he was absolutely useless there. And obviously, he's not gone anywhere since. Yeah. Um, worst manager in our history? 
I think it's 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 a very very fair shout right up there of um, Mike Walker obviously so so bad. Uh, but in terms of our best moments under him, I think to be fair we had some big home wins: Chelsea, United, Palace, Newcastle, all big games, big performances. And to be fair, I think particularly the United game um, and even the Newcastle game, really, because we really stuck in there. We really deserved those wins. Uh, Chelsea, right, we had to be bailed out by Jordan Pickford and a bit of luck as well, of course, with the goal and um, how <laughs> yeah, Pickford makes it. The ball hits both posts and he makes that ridiculous save from, I think it was Azpilicueta or Reese James or someone, I can't quite remember, but um, yeah, just absolutely absurd. Worst game under him, I mean, as I say, I've got them up here, I think it's probably that Brighton game at home, because I remember sat there at a full IKEA flat pack in the car as well, which I knew I had to go deal with when I got home, and I was like, oh god, this is horrendous, I remember as well, everyone on my row pretty much was gone, so I'm there, spread across about four chairs, thinking... You can't get any worse than this. But someone spoke to me and said, who do you want to come in now? You can fix this. And I said, Sean Dyche. Absolutely. And then I'm not saying I'm some sort of Houdini for saying that. It's a very, very obvious as far as I'm concerned. But thankfully he came in and we were fine. Uh, the best players under Lampard. I mean, Pickford, but he's been the best player under two or three Everton managers. Dyche probably included. Ronald Koeman certainly um, was very good for periods under Silver and, and Ancelotti left over latter, I suppose. But... Yeah, Pickford, uh, Richarlison obviously was, you know, he's only there for six months under him, but was was very good. Um, definitely not up to like the corner, that's for sure. Uh, partly because he stopped playing him. Alex Roby as well, probably right up there, to be fair. Worst players, Mope, Michael Keane again. I mean, he's been one of the worst players under three or four managers. Um, John Joe Kenny had a, had a tough six months, I think. He has to play left back, left wing back as well. Um, yeah, I think Mopay and Keane they they come to mind uh, as unfortunately they quite often do. But yeah, um, yeah, what a horrendous era in terms of being an Evertonian. Thankfully, as I say, we've got a much better manager now, much worse situation away from the dugout and off the pitch and all the other shenanigans that come with modern day football. Unfortunately, but. Yeah, uh, here's to a much better year than that one, and here's to hopefully having a manager who's there for longer than eighteen months because we haven't managed that I think since, um, since is it Martinez? I think it must be. Um, Kuman was there for just over a season. Allardyce six, seven, eight months. Silva, same as Kuman, pretty much. Ancelotti, same as same, same again. I think Benitez six months. Lampard a year. Yeah, so I think. If he's still manager come August, September time, I think he's our longest serving manager since Martinez, which, I mean, the Martinez of, sorry, the Everton of Roberto Martinez and the Everton of Sean Dyche are two totally different football clubs, never mind teams and, and sides and all that, two, two different football clubs and establishments. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on the Frank Lampard regime. For me, I think he's probably our worst ever manager. Absolutely disastrous appointment, but thankfully one we are free of now. And one that we had an actual uh, outcome to, to go towards rather than shopping the bargain bin and having to wait for things to happen like we've done with others. Frankly, Sean Dyche was there. I know he's there for a, a lot longer. Let me know your thoughts down below and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Sean.